Okay. So good morning. Thank you all for being here. Um, you all you all know me, most of you, but if you haven't met me yet, uh, my name is Brad Spiegel and I'm the Building Outdoor Communities Program Specialist. And we are so excited for this partnership um, that is just, it's been an ongoing part of the Made by Mountains partnership as well. And I'm gonna let Amy kind of talk about um, what that partnership looks like with Black Folks Camp too and how that can really be something that communities can start embracing as we move further into the, all of the work that we're doing. So Amy, would you like to talk about the great work that Earl is doing? Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, really excited about this next hour together and uh, starting this, this program with y'all. Um, we have with us today Earl B. Hunter Jr., who um, is doing amazing work and is also a good friend. Earl and I started working together. We were both in the outdoor recreation industry um, years past, kind of started working together then and have both moved into what we're doing now. Um, and so excited about this and our, you know, grant partners, Appalachian Regional Commission and Dogwood Health Trust through through our grant funding, we're able to have this partnership with Black Folks Camp 2 um, and to kind of bring that into our building outdoor communities work that we're doing to really think about what it looks like to make sure that our communities and where folks are coming to that they feel welcome whether that's into uh, onto our main street or into a state park or you know anywhere in between you know from the main street to the trails and so we're excited to work with uh, Earl and his team to really talk about what that looks like to be a unity blaze community and to be a place that where everyone feels welcome no matter what background they come from, the color of their skin, um, that when they come into your community, they feel like they belong there. So Earl, with that, I'm going to just send it all off to you. But, but real quick, I've already forgotten something. If you have questions, Earl's going to hit on a lot of great things over the next um, bit of time together. But if you'll pop questions into the chat, and then we'll do some facilitated Q&A um, when he's finished up. So feel free, just throw them in there so that you don't lose track of them. And with that, Earl, thanks so much for joining us. Right on, right on. First of all, everyone, thank you so much for joining the webinar. You know, um, I always get excited to uh, have conversations with folks about uh, the future of our industry, the future of Western North Carolina, and the future of um, being able to make this world better for our uh, our children, children, children. Whether you um, are bearers of children or have children or not, I think that, you know, just for our future, though, is where I'm really leaning to. The second bit of business is if... Um, if the folks who are uh, do not have their camera, if you can turn your camera off, you can do that. If you're in a place to do that, I would really like that. And the third thing is, um, uh, if there may be a mute button uh, for folks that may have some um, some uh, noise in the background, just so we can be uh, very um, respectful of other folks' uh, ears as well. But again, my name is Earl B. Hunter Jr. I'm the founder and president of Black Folks Camp Two. Uh, I tell folks our job is to remove fear add knowledge and invite more black folks to camp and enjoy the outdoor lifestyle with any and everyone. We don't care about your race, your age or your gender or your ability. Uh, we really just wanna get folks around the campfire literally and figuratively so we can start having conversations. And we're gonna find out we got more same than differences. And that's kind of how we operate. Um, uh, before I get started though, I wanna just kind of be a bit, a big, give a big thank you to um, ARC, but especially also to Made by Mountains. As Amy mentioned a minute ago, uh, I've been knowing Amy for quite some time. Amy has been incredible for Black Folks Camp too, personally. She's been incredible for me uh, because Amy has been a great connector for a lot of spaces that I'm actually, that our company is actually residing in at the moment. Amy has been a very, uh, a connector to um, whether it be folks in Western North Carolina or folks uh, across the, across uh, the pond or, or in other, other parts of the country. And that's been very incredible for me because um, I just believe that uh, we cannot do this work alone and we're not going to try to do it alone. And we have to have not only allies, but partners who are willing to get in the boat and start rowing with us to, to get to this next step. The second thing I would say to you all is that when we think about Black Folks Camp 2, we think about our company. I have to share with you all is that we are a business. You know, we are a company. We're not a nonprofit. We don't accept donations. Um, we don't, uh, we built our company on 
the fact that we want to be a viable company, a scalable company, so that we can actually help and drive the business for um, for those individuals out there who are looking to see more diversity in the outdoors, uh, in the outdoors, in the outdoor space, or in Western North Carolina. Uh, our clients range from uh, the outdoor industry all the way to the tourism industry, right? Um, and we, we've we amassed an enormous amount of clients at the moment, and which is a good thing, but it's also scary as we continue to scale in this environment. Um, and the last thing before I get into this, um, what we're doing in regards to the Unity Blaze course is to tell you all, I'm extremely grateful for the folks that are on this call. I'm extremely grateful that you join us. I thank you. I don't want you to think that your 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 attendance here uh, has gone um, unwarranted. And I just want to let you know, under the sound of my voice, that I'm humbled and I appreciate it because for the last four years, this has been a journey. This has been an extremely emotional journey, physically mentally and spiritually we have gone through a lot as a company our projection or what we project to the to the industry what we project on social media what we project in our emails what we project in everything that we do is delightful we want you all to know that we believe that we're one of the most delightful companies in the world and we're going to make sure that we we're that way all the time with that being said, though, we go through things just like everybody else in this industry. We we have been dealt blows like everyone else. We have been we have been trying to figure our answers just like everyone else. We we don't have all the answers. We we haven't we don't have this this golden goose or this magic wand up to fix all this. However, what we do have though, we have the sense of that we have to understand the we knew we had to understand the why before we can get to the what, when, where, and how. And that's with any business. It doesn't matter who you are. If you do not get to the why, you're not going to get to the what, when, where, and how. Many of you have probably heard me speak before, so I won't go so much depth into our company, but I will tell you that our company was launched, and many of you probably know this, on the stage of the Outdoor Economy Conference in 2019. I was actually the uh, master of ceremony there. And I'm so grateful that Noah and that team gave me the opportunity to do that because I, it was, a, it was an opportunity for me, myself, to share with the world, to share with people what we, uh, what we were going to do and what we're doing right now. So I would like to introduce uh, Ian. Uh, Ian Garrett is a part of Black Folks Camp 2. And I, I like to introduce Ian and all the folks in our company, Daryl, Mia, Craig, and all these folks, because our company says black folks can't do. It don't say only black folks work at black folks can't do. And it don't say black folks can't with just black folks or black folks can't by themselves. It says black folks can't do. And two means also and as well. And the misconception of black folks can't do is a company that, that all we do and all we think about is just black folks. And that's not true at all, all right? The misconception is about our company is that what we do and how we get it done is uh, in a space where it doesn't include everyone. And that's not true at all. As a matter of fact, our company was built on the fact that we're going to create more unity in the outdoor community and beyond. And we're doing that. And we're doing it in a mighty way, which you're going to hear here shortly. But the reason why this call is so pertinent is because of the course that we just launched, which is the Unity Blaze course in conjunction with Made by Mountain, in conjunction with ARC, and we're very proud of it. As you probably all probably have seen, for the last four years, I've been traveling around this country keynoting to everyone, right? Everyone we can just tell our story to, who we are, what we're doing. And every time that I leave, um, or every time that I finish, uh, we get a standing ovation, right, for the work. And I got to be frank with you, the first five or six times, I was like, oh, this is cool, man. We get the standing ovation. It's great. But after the time had gone past of getting those standing ovations, and I didn't see many folks actually doing the work that we talked about 
that we would be doing to change the narrative. The standing ovations became kind of null to me. They, they weren't really that popular anymore to me. Because at the end of the day, our company was created to go out of business because we want to get this work done and make sure that we have a more inclusive outdoors. We want to have a more inclusive place where people can go into different cities and different spaces to feel like they are invited and they're welcome. We want folks to, to get in their car from Atlanta, from Charlotte, from, from uh, Raleigh, from just different towns and feel like I'm going to go to a place I've never seen before, never been before. And I, don't have to worry about someone telling me that I don't belong there. I want folks to 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 get their children to want to go in these parks or want to go in these spaces, don't look around and feel like that this is the most scariest place they've been in their life. I want folks to feel like that they can have conversations with folks that don't look like them. Folks that may be a different race for them, a different age, a different gender different abilities. And that's why our company was created. Yes, our company was created to get more black folks in the outdoors, but our company was created to get more folks around the campfire, no matter what their race is, so we can, again, start having beautiful conversations. With that being said, because of the, the state of the business, because of the state of the outdoor industry, uh, I come to you with facts and not opinions. You know, we spent close to now almost five almost a half a million dollars on just data and getting facts and, and driving this home. And we appreciate Made by Mountain for helping fund some of that, right? Because we we and and, and we, we very we're very grateful to all this. And I and I have to tell folks that I'm 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 my heart is so filled um because we have had partners who wanted to get to the bottom of this and really fix this. And the Made by Mountain crew, uh the Mountain Biz Work crew I don't think they get told enough by us how much we appreciate them. So I wanted you guys to hear this um, in public or with other folks that we appreciate you very much. And because of that, I appreciate you for getting these folks on this call. And I'm going to appreciate the people on this call a lot more after we start getting this work done, because this is going to be amazing. All right. Um, and so, as I stated, we've been going around the country and I've been keynoting and I've been sharing this message with some of the largest companies in the world other cities, other states, state parks, national parks. I mean, everyone has been hearing this. And everyone was like, wow, let's go. Well, we also needed to make sure that we were doing our job. We wanted to be able to share the message, but we also needed to find some solutions to these issues. And as I will say this to you all is that, you know, we we spend 20% of our time on issues, and we spend 80% we spend of our time on solutions. We are not a kumbaya type company. You just can't come tap us on the shoulder and be like, oh my God, you guys are doing a great job. Well, we want to be able to tap you on your shoulder and say you're doing a great job too in this space as well. And we're not going to be able to do that though until we actually project and share with you the why. So the Unity Blaze course that we partner with and that we shape with Made by Mountains is basically uh, the keynote that I keynoted in Missouri, uh, from Missouri State Parks. It was actually uh, curated at the um, Bass Pro Shop, right, at their big facility. And it was the first time I actually ever recorded a keynote, ever, of all the hundreds of keynotes I've ever done, it's the first one I ever recorded. Well, we recorded that keynote, and we actually have not only the keynote, but we also have a training or a quiz and a course along with the keynote. So that folks can follow along to ask questions to get understanding. And this and this keynote is filled with tons of data. It's filled with tons of passion. And it's filled with tons of truth. Some of the truths and the passion is hard to hear. But these truths is the data that we collected based on what we know in our outdoor industry. Well, we know that Western North Carolina is has a huge population of people move here, move to this area because of the outdoors. They come here because we have an amazing, amazing nature scene, right? People are not coming to Western North Carolina because they want to come to the big city. They're coming to Western North Carolina because they want to get some rest and relaxation. Where there's a lot of folks that live here in Western North Carolina that look like Earl, 
that don't know nothing about how amazing the rest and relaxation is in these beautiful parts. There's a lot of folks in here that look like the majority of the folks on this call that don't look like Earl, that don't know how amazing the rest and relaxation is in these beautiful areas. Our job as a company is to make sure that everyone feels whether they live 2,000 miles away or whether they live two miles away. We want folks to feel invited and welcome to enjoy Western North Carolina the way we all love and enjoy it. And so the course that we created was really just sharing with you all before we can get to the part of the invitation is really just telling you the why. Because we know when we go on around the country that most folks don't know the why that folks like myself or, or uh, uh, people of color have never been in the outdoors. And we wanted to debunk all the, the, the phallus or the, or the thought process to get to the real so we can actually get to the what, when, where, and how, right? And so one of the biggest things I wanted to convey to you all via that course was, is that some people, the people who, have, who are watching it and who have viewed it, they've said to us in email, I never knew those things that you said. I never knew, I never heard of that. And so some of the things that they had been doing to fix it, they then started to think that what I've been doing to fix this is not gonna fix it, right? And my heart is telling me that it's gonna fix it, but in regards to the action items, what I've been doing is not gonna fix this. So let me stop doing what I'm doing and figure out a new way based on the data that actually was shared in the course. You see? And so that is the most important piece because everyone on this call, I know that you have a heart of gold and if you want to change these things, you want to be involved or you wouldn't be here, right? Our job is to help get you on the track within your organizations and where you are so that we can actually move the needle off center so we can actually stop talking about this, right? Black Folks Camp 2 was created to go out of business. If we do our job properly, we will go out of business. And I will want that so much. So with us being said, I want to stop right here for a second and just kind of give you all this kind of backdrop on the, the course. And for some of you who have taken it and for the ones who haven't, to kind of give you a little backdrop. It's a 45-minute course for the most part. It is a keynote. It has... Uh, it has question and answer quizzes on there. You can't go, you can't go forward until you answer the questions. And matter of fact, it's almost like a, a quiz that you have the cliff notes for. We don't want you to fail. We want you to pass. We want you to go through it and pass so that you can be educated, right? We're not trying to trick you, right? We're not doing that at all. We're really just wanting to educate you. Secondly, and third in that, we are, I think Scott just joined us. Hey, Scott. <laughs> Uh, if you can go, there you go. Um, we, we're not trying to trick anyone. We want folks to understand this knowledge. Uh, the fourth thing in that is that we are constantly making updates to this training to make it better as we move forward. Most folks just say, okay, now I've taken the training. After I take the training, what's next, Earl? What is it that, that is for us? Well, we created this training because we have uh, a symbol, which is the campfire on our logo which we have dealt as the Unity Blades, right? And when we first started this company, the Unity Blades meant treat everyone everywhere equal, right? And we still believe that. We still believe that folks should treat everyone everywhere equally. But we believe, but after our data though, we found that most of the folks who reached out to us via email, social media, particularly during COVID and afterwards, these folks said, that they really want to go explore Western North Carolina. They really want to go explore the outdoors. They don't necessarily feel like they're invited and welcome to do all that. So we change or we, 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 we utilize the unity blaze now to mean that you're invited and you're welcome. So when you, when they see this, there's two things happen, folks. The excuse from the consumer is now being removed of them feeling that they're not invited and welcome because we're getting that message out to them as well. That's our campaign for 2024, is to get that message out to folks that you're invited and you're welcome when you see this unity blaze, right? Secondly, we have to make sure before we do that is to make sure that our industry and that the folks who, are, uh, who, are, who want to invite folks, that they are educated and understand why the folks weren't coming in the first place. 
And once we have these two entities working towards each other, one feel like they're invited and the other one doing the inviting, we're going to find out, folks. We're going to have some amazing conversation with folks. And we're going to find out all the stereotypes and all the things that we may think about other folks are not what they are in the first place. But we're not going to be able to do that if folks are not coming. And so hopefully what we want to do is that we're going to utilize the unity blaze itself as a symbol, which is the campfire, the oldest form of light, heat, gathering, and cooking to invite folks to our beautiful place. Some of you all may say, well, Earl, that's all well and good. And, um, and is this particular program, particular Unity Blaze, only for Western North Carolina? And I would tell you, no. As a matter of fact, on Friday of last week, uh, Indiana, this is Indiana DNR, Indiana State Parks, and the whole and part of Indiana public, public spaces, Indiana is about to be Unity Blaze certified, where our Unity Blaze is about to be raised on their flags in their parks and state parks, that it's a symbol for welcoming. Not only Indiana, Oregon is on board, Missouri is on board, uh, Wisconsin, and all these other states that we're meeting with. But it would be a shame, and this is what I've said many times, and this is what Amy and I have talked about, that I live in Western North Carolina, that the folks in Western North Carolina don't know anything about the Unity Blade or don't want to brand it something that says that you're invited and welcome. And so this product and this time in our in our in our our company history or in Western Western North Carolina history, I think is pretty profound. I think that a lot of folks have done a lot of work in the past to try to curate this and and and, and change all this. And I think that we're jumping in the boat right with you. And I want you to jump in the boat right th with us and we're gonna do this together. All right. Now, after that quiz, after you go through that course, one of the things that we felt like that we could not do, we couldn't be everything to everybody. We could not go around and have these conversations with everyone. And so after the course is done, we're going as a company, 2024, first quarter, um, you may ask, what do we get? Well, what's going to happen is, is that we're going to, we're creating these newsletters. They're going to go out to you all. And it's going to talk about the things that we're doing to help promote the Unity Blaze. We're also going to talk about how you can actually promote the Blaze and also promote your area and where you live in conjunction with it. And how to utilize the Unity Blaze and its properties to invite and welcome folks. Uh, and within that new those newsletters as well, there are going to be some tips in there to help you do the things that you may or may not know how to do, whether it be social media wise, whether it be... Uh, in your uh, tourism wise or whatever it may be in regards to helping to invite folks. Because some of the folks that we work with, they always say this to us, we, we wanna do this, we just don't know what to do, all right? And I gotta also share with you all is that even in this conversation that we're having right now, this is a safe conversation for you. You can say what you wanna say and how you wanna say it and don't feel like you have to walk on eggshells with this because this is one of the reasons why we're in the space we're in now. As a matter of fact, Black Folks Camp 2 shouldn't even be around in 2023. Right. But we are and we're here and we're going to help fix the things that are actually in this space. There's a few things that need a little fixing. Right. Uh, number one is uh, the invitation. We 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 as Western North Carolina uh, in every county that we're in, we have to learn to invite folks and knowing, though, that inviting folks doesn't look the same for everyone. It doesn't look the same for every culture. It doesn't feel the same for everyone. And because it doesn't feel the same and look the same for everyone, we have to be very strategically aligned on how to do that. We're going to help you. Number two, we have to also be able to, uh, to, to stand up against the rhetoric, though, of folks who may not be who are uneducated about what you're doing, about why you're doing it. Because you're going to get this, or uh, you're being woke, or you're being this, you're being this way, you're being that way. And really, all you're really doing is inviting and welcoming folks to come into your town to actually uh, come into your area uh, is really an economic play as well. And I, I have to tell folks this. I believe in ROI. I believe in ROI. Most folks believe that is return on investment, but we believe it. We call it return on inclusion. Return on inclusion is a, is a major way. And as you will go through that, the course, you're going to hear me say, in the next 15 to 17 years, the minority 
will be the majority in this country. You're not going to be able to stop it. You're not going to be able to hold it back. It's going to happen. Well, there are folks that are in that minority space that don't know nothing about the outdoors. They don't know nothing about nature. They don't know anything about Western North Carolina. And so if you're wanting to invite those folks and get those folks in the space, they're soon going to be the majority as well. And those folks are the same folks that are going to be voting for policy. They're going to be, they're going to be the ones purchasing these products in different areas. And they don't have any record, recollection of how to do that and when to do that. And for that, our small towns, our spaces that rely on people to come through these towns to spend their hard-earned dollars, they're not coming. And then the last piece in that, what I really want to flush out, and this may resonate or may not resonate with you all, but what I really want to flush out with our company and with the Unity Blaze, I really want to flush out, flush out if folks truly want to really invite folks and truly want to welcome folks in their spaces. And if you and if and if you and if you do, which it sounds like folks do, this will give you an opportunity to share that. And if you don't, we will know that pretty soon. We will know that really, really soon. All right. And then the last part before I start taking any questions from you all um, is this. There's an individual, a personal component to this. There's a very personal connection and component to this. Four years ago, I knew nothing really about backpacking. I knew nothing about setting up a tent. I didn't know that I could go into the backcountry and cook me some amazing food. I didn't know that I could make pizza in the backcountry, backpacking. I didn't know that their counties around Western North Carolina have some amazing history, good, bad, or indifferent. I didn't know that counties and areas in these spaces have some amazing restaurants, amazing atmospheres, waterfalls, trails, and any of that. And there's a lot of folks that look like Earl that have no clue how amazing these places are. Well, there's some folks that showed me how amazing Western North Carolina is whether it be in the back country or in the front range. And those folks did not look like me. Those folks cared enough about me, though, to invite me into these spaces, to show me their landscapes, to show me the, their culture that I had never seen before. Put me on the culture so much, the hell, I've been listening to... Uh, uh, so much music that I've never heard before that I love because I'm a music guy. Uh, you know, I never thought I'd like a banjo and I actually like it, you know? I, I never even thought I'd like, you know, the different music that is curated in Western North Carolina, but I do. And other people will too if they're exposed to this. Because in all honesty, the banjo wasn't my friend. It was, a, it was an instrument that when I heard that instrument, I thought about fear and horror when I heard that, that, that plane. It was something that was not for my ears at liking. I didn't even think I liked bluegrass music. And I do, you know, I, because I have been indoctrinated in something that I was introduced. However, though, I don't expect all my friends to enjoy bluegrass. I don't expect all my friends to enjoy banjos. I don't expect all the friends that look like me to even want to come to North Carolina. But the expectation is for me that they're invited and they're welcome, whether they come or not. And that is what I'm trying to get our industry to understand. We have to invite and welcome folks and give them the opportunity to want to do all this. All right. So... I want to open this up for questions because I'm, I'm pretty sure there are a lot. And then I, and as you start to ask questions, uh, I'm sure that there's a couple of things that will pop up in my head uh, because we're going to talk about, I want to talk about two other things of um, in regards to the, uh, the cost of the program and also talk about what the future looks like. And for all the folks on the sound of my voice right now, you, you should be really thankful and to love on what, uh, made by mountains and um and ARC because the the course for the first year for you all uh is complimentary and um and we haven't done that for anyone to be frank with you um because again I, I shared that with you all we're a business and we we have to we spent we've spent a lot of money getting this data and getting this information and uh, 
we just can't give it away. We have to share this with folks so you can get better. And um, and Maybach Mountains has made it possible for you all to get this program and get these things complimentary, particularly for the first year of this program. And we're going to talk to you all about what that means for the future. But I want to open up right now to questions for folks who either gone through the course or who have not gone through the course. Um, this is your time, hopefully, to give as much feedback as you can and more thought process. And trust me, um, you're not going to hurt our feelings at all. Uh, and you also, but you you can make us uh, more delightful than we already are as well. So with, with comments and things of that nature. So let's open that up. And I don't know how you want to, Bradley, I don't know how you want to, um, to, to, to facilitate that. But if you, I guess if you guys have that little uh, hand raising on your, on your Zoom system, you can do that and just ask any questions that you like at the moment. Yeah, I would just say when you, you can unmute yourself too and just, if you just say your name and say what county uh, you represent, because I think that'd be kind of cool for Earl to have that picture in his mind. Anybody? I'll start. Um, my name's Amy and I'm with Haywood County Tourism. Um, hey, so Amy. Hi, we're Visit NC Smokies. Um, we're really excited to get started on this course. Um, my question would be, is this something that you want everyone in our organization to participate in, whether it be a volunteer at the visitor center or our executive director? Is that something you want everyone to participate in? Absolutely. I think, as a matter of fact, I think one of the things that we've shared with folks as a company is that I, we speak to a lot of executives. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, I just got before I got on this call, I was on the fall a, a call with one of one of the top executives in the art and in the in the outdoor industry, and she and I were talking about, um, you know, um, how do we move forward, Earl? She loves what we're doing. How do we move forward? And one thing I said to her, we cannot move forward unless we have this conversation with leadership first, mm -hmm. because leadership is going to have to drive this down to these folks that are actually on the ground. So yes, we do want everyone in your organization to. Uh, to be a part of this whole course, right? We want them to get to get Unity Blaze certified. And for all of you all that don't know, and if you hadn't taken a course, after you finish the course, you're going to get a certificate at the end that you can print off. And we want you to be proud of that certificate that you've gone through this course, right? And we want you to we want you to share it, with everybody. I've gone through this course, and we also want you to not sugarcoat and tell us how we can make the course better, right? And how we can make things better. So yes, to answer your question, yes. Awesome. Okay, I didn't think I was going to be on camera, so. <laughs> well, you look amazing, so there you go. I am from Hayesville, North Carolina, Clay County. A very, very small population period, but um, very few minorities. I'm a part of a revitalization association and also with the outdoor uh, initiative, but I'm also very much involved with a cycling club that we would love to see more people of color involved. Um, I helped develop the Jackrabbit mountain bike trails and there's hiking and trail running and everything there. And I've been delighted over this past summer to have seen a lot more people of color on the trails. Um, and that makes me smile. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I, I have not taken your course yet, uh, but I, I'm going to because I want those tips on how to involve uh, minorities in cycling and, you know, everything that, you know, I need ideas. <laughs> yeah, I need yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, and I'm glad you I'm glad you're very um you know what I love is um Joanne, honestly, I love your confidence on how you're gonna get this done because I feel like you're gonna get it done. We're gonna get it done. In this course, uh we're gonna we're gonna we 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 talk a lot about the why that you haven't seen folks in the face in the first place, right? Now here's the thing that you said a minute ago, and I wanna I wanna help you understand this. This is in the course, you know, for the last two, three years. You know, we've we've seen an uptick. All right, let's give him a second. And wave of it. Sorry. 
No, you cut yeah. off for just a second, but but you're back in. I'm back, and I'm sorry. Um, what, I don't know what you guys. Let me just start from the beginning, Joanne. I was saying that you, I, I, I'm very delighted that you uh, want to learn more and know more because that's the first step to really want to get things done. But I was going to say to you, in the course, we talk a lot about the why, and we give a lot of the whys and the reason why these folks have not been on these trails and why you only seen a very few. In the last two, three years, two, three years, particularly during the COVID era um, that we were in, um, we saw an uptick. Hashtag Zoom era. I know. Have we canceled the word uptick? Because it's every time that we hit that word, it like <laughs> <laughs> goes out on us. <laughs> Let's see if he... If he gets back with us. And hey guys, can, can you hear me? Can yes, you hear you? Earl. Okay, you're talking uh, about there's there's an uptick in something that we haven't heard yet. We're really excited to hear what it is. All right. What I was saying is that uh Joanna, you know, there was uh I won't even use that word anymore. I say Joy, there was a forward movement of many people of color in the outdoors. And um and everybody was excited. The industry was going crazy. Oh, yeah, we see a lot of people, people of color in the outdoors. Well, it took a whole. Oh, disease. It, it sounds good. It was amazing. But here's the here's the, the issue to that. The issue to that is that the data shows that 70 percent of those folks are not going back anymore. Is that they there's a there's an attrition rate. They're not going back anymore because of the experience and not because the experience of people on the trail because most of those folks went in the outdoors and they didn't know what to do. Many didn't know that they needed to take a water bottle with them to go two, three miles on the trail. They didn't know what to do when they saw a bear. They didn't know how to uh, filter water. All right, we'll see if he comes back. Is that, is that, is, I'm wondering, is that me on my end? I think it is, Earl. We're all right, all well, I just, here. I just changed the little setting just now. Maybe that changes it. Well, okay. But what I was saying is that many folks, we, we've seen a kind of a, um, a uh, we've seen an attrition based on uh, the data. And by the way, when I speak on data, we use the same folks in regards to data as the entire industry used. We hired the same data folks. So that's what folks say, when they look at our data, like something's not right. Well, it's not right because we ask different questions, right? And we're not trying to make the data look good. We're trying to get the real data. And the real data shows that 70% of the folks who look like myself, who gone camping in the outdoors, 70% of those folks are not going back anymore, right? Or 70% 70, 70 of those folks are not really enjoying the outdoors as much. Because now folks can get on planes and go do what they were doing in the first place, right? Which is not loving on the outdoors, right? So our hope is, is that after the course, after you take the course, it'll actually fuel some things in your, in your mind, personally and also business-wise, that'll help you change the narrative of the things you were doing to invite folks. And if you weren't inviting folks, hopefully the keynote and the things that we're doing here going forward are going to help you as well. OK, we are at the toenail of the elephant with this. So if you're thinking that we're just going to change this overnight, it's not going to happen because it wasn't it, it, it wasn't created overnight on why these folks haven't been in the outdoors. And I don't want to necessarily steal, steal the thunder of the course uh, for you, Joanne. I want you to take the course and then you'll hear those things. OK, OK. But but it was really good that you, you chimed in, though, and um and um. And actually, I know where Hayesville is, so I'm pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Right on. But I have a question of, um, for you, Earl. That yeah, right. um, they're just kind of like a, a thought, maybe a potential outcome. So part of the Building Outdoor Communities work, uh, one of the months they focus on, the teams are focusing on different aspects of the outdoor economic ecosystem. So they're thinking about infrastructure, economy, the brand, the tourism etc for the branding component which i know some of you are thinking about right now is when joanna was talking i was like is there a possibility if, if 
the right people go through the course that they could then co-brand like at the trailhead, whether it's a flag or, you know, a Unity Blaze flag or a Unity Blaze emblem, um, you know, on the gateway trailheads. Is that something that you can see, you see being an outcome of communities that go through the program? Absolutely. You know, we 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 kind of are two or three steps ahead of everybody with that. You know, uh, as I look at the bill all the time from all the flags that we have, we have uh, an enormous amount of flags and we have an enormous amount of um, we we. if you go to our website, blackfolkscamp2.com, we have those things in there. But for this community, though, we want to be able to offer those things that you guys for 50 percent of the retail. We want to give it to you based at cost so you can start to do all those things. Co-branded wise, we really need to have a conversation about that, though. And because we, because everything we have is trademark, so I want to, I want to have a conversation about that with individuals before they start to do that. But in regards to the the, the current blaze, um, we have those things available for folks who want to do that. Like for instance, folks who, um, for instance, retail spaces that actually come on board with our Unity Blaze space, they 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 get decals for their doors, they get flags, they get these things to be able, and they get to utilize the intellectual properties on their websites. We want you to do that. We want you to brand this, this Unity Blaze uh, certificate and tell people that when folks ask, what is that? Well, we we are learning. We are and we have learned to invite and welcome everyone. Right. We, we're, we're that's what we're doing. We're in this course. We're in this space. And and um, with that, um, to answer your question, Bradley, we would love to get to the point where we're co-branding some things, co-labeling some things. But I think one of the biggest things is, is to make sure we get the blaze out there in that space where folks start to ask questions of what it is. Because what you're going to find is we've done so much work in the last four years of just driving the business and driving the blaze. There are a lot of folks out there that already know what it is and they already understand what it is and they already are ready to say to you, right on, right? We, we get that already. We get that from as far as California to New York. I mean, all the way down to, to the South. Because we're working with all these state parks. And that is a big thing for us and how we actually uh, how we operate as a company. So yes, Bradley, that's that's something that we want to uh to explore. But as of now, you know, we 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 are ready to partner with you all to get you uh Unity Blaze um uh product. But after you go through your your quiz and after you go through the the course. We want you to utilize our our the blaze um on your 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 social media, your website, and we want you to tell people what it is. We do. Right? And that way, you know, that that message will will resonate as well. Any Joanne, thoughts or more questions? Hey, no. Amanda. I'm sorry. I have a question. Yeah. Um Hi, Earl. I'm Amanda. I work with the uh, TDA in Blowing Rock and um we're pretty we're all of our staff is planning on uh completing the course. A few of us have. It's super I mean, it's just it's a lot to take in. It was really great to have that information. It started giving us some ideas like, I mean, part of that invitation is that that our content hasn't even rest necessarily been geared to people who aren't already getting outdoors and know what to do when they get there. I think we kind of had this um blind spot about like people who are coming here are already doing this they're already interested so we just need to show them where and not like right. how so that's one of the first things that we're going to tackle i think is trying to um we can help you with that, that too, content by the so way. we're excited about that say what i said we can help you with that because we can help you with that whole content space right uh we you know yeah, what that was my question is some of that research yeah yeah like how to how to build out those um first time hiker first time camper guides like what are the specific things that that are speaking to like that first time level if you yeah is that something that you guys have that research on and can can help us build out so that it's not um you know so it's not too far over anybody's experience level but it also like really meets them where they are yeah that's a that's a very amazing question and that's what we are planning to do in regards to our newsletters as we as we share our newsletters every every quarter um starting in um in 20 I'm Q1 2024. That's our big deal, right? Uh and I know folks and, and folks have access us all the time. Like we need it now. We want it right now. But I gotta be frank with you, we're not ready to give it to you right now. We're, we're really not. And um, you know, our company is based on a lot of data. Uh we we 
this is the, these are the four pillars of our company so you guys understand how we operate it, it has to be sincere it has to be meaningful we have to be able to measure it or we, we don't think it's going to be sustainable right so so that that being said we we can't operate on opinions we can't operate on just willy-nilly stuff we just can't like just throw stuff against the wall and see if it's sick not in this this form of where we are as a company because there's too much at risk for us now because from a from a uh, resource perspective, we don't have a that much resource to 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 do that. And number two, we got to use what's tried and true for us. And we've got a lot of things in beta right now, beta and uh, using a lot of that data and facts to make these things right. Uh, for example, um, we for the last two to three years, you know, we've been keeping a really close, tight lip on what we've been doing, and that's why folks haven't been knowing who we are. Most folks thought that we took folks out in the outdoors, that we or we were a group or a club, and we're not. But we did all those things because we had to get, we had to get data, and we hadn't been telling folks what we've been doing because we didn't know what we were doing. At, at, we needed to get the data and start to create programming around it. And this the first thing we came out with was this training that you went through. And on top of that now is how do we build on that to get you what you want? So we really are using that 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 quiz and the keynote to flush out the things that you just asked for, Amanda. So we want you to share with us what do you need, what is it that you're wanting to get, and how we can actually facilitate that in regards to these newsletters or a la carte. Right? Because we have that motion as well. Like if anybody on this call says to us, hey, we we want to go further, Earl, we want to do this campaign, we want to do these things, we have the ability to create and put those campaigns together for you. We're already doing that now for, for, for not only just state parks, but we do that for our partners like Oboe's Footwear. We put these campaigns together for a lot of folks. But that's some out of cart things that do not come with this particular training deal. But you're going to get some tips in regards to the newsletter that you can go out and do it on your own. Right? Yeah. And for some folks who need to have their hands held a bit more that feel like they can't do it on their own, well, we have a service for that as well. Right. Yeah. Makes I mean, we, we can start with the basics in terms of having that, those first time guides for things. But um, like you're saying, getting that feedback from people and getting that data on like specific experiences that we can speak to in like adding more to those guides to make them more, just more useful to, to everybody who's, who's seeing them. That's, that's what we would be after for sure. Yeah. A lot of that so is also great. is it, a lot of that is copy. It is you know yeah. I know everybody we can do the copy said this. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> saying this part right here. I gotta tell you, my mom would say this all the time to me. It ain't always what you say is how you say it, right? Right. Right. And, yeah. and how you position things social media wise. And and um, I, I will tell you this: uh, if you go through our social media on a daily basis or per day, you I hope you find that. The things that we share is are delightful. Everything is delightful, but the but the tone the tone is delightful. But there's a message always involved in that, right? Because we're not trying to twist arms. We're twisting hearts. There's a difference. We're not trying to call people out. We're calling them in. It's a difference, and we're not leaving you out there to fend for yourself. We want to help you do this, right? And by the way, um, I'm pretty fond of Blowing Rock. I'm an App State graduate. Just want to let you know. know that. Been in that area for quite, a, quite a bit. <laughs> right on. Thank you. Right on. Happy, happy to you then. Um, any, 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 any other? Hey, yo, John. I mean, Joe. What's happening? Hey, I don't really have any questions. Um, I'm just looking forward to this, and I'm, as you can see, I'm an old guy, and I'm hoping to. Uh, get more younger folks involved with me. I'm the co-leader of the Building Outdoor Communities team. Uh, and so I'm gonna, I wanna get them involved um, in, in the course. Uh, right on. And I think you probably know where Boone is. I'm with the Boone Area Chamber of Commerce. Right on, uh, man. I work part-time uh, as their economic development director. Uh, used to be with the county for a lot of years and, and semi-retired. Uh, so anyway, I feel strongly about this and I'm happy that I received the invitation. Right on. Well, well, Joe, let me just share a few things with you. Uh, first of all, happy, happy to you too. Um, 
Yeah, I went there too. That's right, baby. We 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 probably graduated at the same time. Which was about 37, 38? Yeah, right. All right. <laughs> but, but, well, here's the thing, uh, Joe, is that um the I'm glad you're on this call. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm glad you're on this call. Because the data, the data shows that the folks who take care of the outdoors, who the folks who are um very integral in the uh the mountain, I'm mean, sorry, in the western North Carolina areas. The data shows that many of those folks are 60 to 70 year old white males that have been curating the space in a lot of spaces, particularly in the outdoors. Well, the data also shows that those folks, when we talk about the invitation and welcome into the outdoors, is that sometimes those individuals who know the outdoors the most, which are the folks in your space, are not invited to go invite folks. And I want you to know, and I want you to feel confident that I want you to invite folks. And I want you to feel like you're included in the space too as well, right? I want you to feel like that you're not excluded. You, you, we have work to do. And just like you have work to do, we have work to do. And 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 everybody, we, we want to do this work together. So I'm glad you're here, my friend, right? And, um, and if there's some things that are on the sound of my voice that do not make sense in this space, I always want you all to just say, look, let's have a conversation about it and try to figure out how to get this, how to move the needle off, off center. Because um, none of us here are spring chickens on here, maybe a couple of us, right? And we all have a life expectancy. And I gotta tell folks this, I'm 47 years old. And um, this is my life. My life is to make sure that um, our children, children, children are able to explore the outdoors in Western North Carolina and every other space in this beautiful country in a way that is very, um, not only just safe for them, but it's very sincere, meaningful measure and it can be sustainable for them. And so nothing else really matters to me. Like nothing else matters that um, we got a nice home. We live in this beautiful area, 250 waterfalls and a two mile radius. That's great and all. But I always tell folks, man, I'm not the king. I don't want to be the king. I'm the king maker. I want, want folks, I want folks I want, to, I want folks to go out and feel empowered to do this, to wake up in the morning and know we have an issue that we can cure. So, so Joe, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so appreciative that you're here, my friend. And um, we're going we're gonna to do it, boss. Hey, Earl, that, that's awesome. Um, we've got five minutes left, so I just want to be conscious of everyone's time. I know we have a lot of marketing folks here on the call, and so I want to ask you, uh, we're talking a lot about this Unity Blaze work in communities right now. I know you've done a similar program with campground so that folks can look and find a campground where they can see that flag hanging and say, I am, no matter where I come from, color my skin, background, like this is where I can go. They've gone through the course. They want me here. Um, and one thing with that, that I think super on your website, you have a map, right? Yes. Where people can go. Like if I want to know where's the place that's safe for me to go camping, I can look at that map. Is there going to be a similar map for communities so that people can go on there and see, oh, Blowing Rock, they've gone through this Unity Blaze certification. They're going to welcome me. That's where I'm going to take my family on vacation. Will absolutely. that happen for? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, Amy. As a matter of fact, um, you know, Gaston, North Carolina, uh, Gaston County in North Carolina, you know, um, the folks down there, they reached out to me early on. Matter of fact, they were one of the first people that reached out to us after the Outdoor Economy Conference. And, um, and them in Wilkesboro, uh, Thomas, uh, I got to tell you a story about Thomas. He's an incredible individual. Valley. But um, yeah. um, we they they reached out to us, and they were one of the biggest reasons why, from a TDA perspective, look, every tourism uh, department association they're thinking the same way. Like I head out to Utah uh, in a couple of weeks to have a, a to keynote to them. Arizona, uh, Canada, um, all these places. Everybody's thinking the same way. How do we invite and how do we welcome folks? That we have never welcomed before. Everybody's going through the same thing. So it doesn't matter whether you're in Western North Carolina, wherever you are, everyone is dealing and going through the same thing. Now, everyone may not go through these courses and feel like they have to go through these things. But we believe that the Unity Blaze itself is that symbol to welcome folks. We believe that when folks see that, they feel like, look, I'm at least invited. And I'm at least welcome there. So I'm going, right? But what we can't do is, as a company, we can't keep people safe. 
that we we can't do that. That's on that's on you. You're gonna have to do that. As a matter of fact, we have that stringently said. We can't do that, but we can make sure people are invited and welcome. We also can make sure that your uh that your county, that your area is on that map. We can make sure of that. But we're not gonna make sure of that until you go through our process, right? And that process, uh, it's like like Amanda said, there's some hard things on there to hear, but it is what it is. And after you hear it, it'll hopefully change your mindset on what you're doing based on what Amanda just said as well, right? Um, and what we're and, and what and just from a time perspective, Amy, um, I don't mind. Look, you guys are family. We we're in Western North Carolina, okay? We're family. I'm going to give you our email address. And you email us. If you're struggling with something, there's some folks in your department are struggling with some things, you know, I'll make a trip and come down there and have these conversations with y'all so we can get this right. We want to be able to say that Western North Carolina, man, we, we invite and welcome people. I don't care what y'all say, what people think about us. I don't care about the history. We invite people. And we need to, we, 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 we have two we have too much to gain and we have a lot to lose by not doing this. There are a lot of places out there, folks, that have, they're, they're, they have beautiful buildings, they have beautiful everything, and they're trying to attract people as well. We need to be the first to tell people, you, you are welcome and invited here. And when we do that, our hands are clean. And then we start to work behind the scenes to make sure when people do get there, and they do get to your places that they 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 truly do feel like they've been invited and welcome. But also letting folks know we got rules around here now. We have policies and things we have in place and not be afraid to share that with people. No matter what their race, age, or gender is. Right. So any I know for time perspective, any any more questions and thoughts? There you go, Joanna. Do you got a question? I think you put your hand up. Oh, I did, you know, but I, I think you and Amanda kind of got onto the, the topic that I was going to ask about. Just, um, I would say, you know, for anyone on this call, you, you obviously you work with state parks, you work with organizations that have a lot of tiers of employee and sometimes bureaucracy too. And I was just going to ask, you know, what's your best piece of advice as you know, folks embark upon this course and then also encourage others to do so. Uh, you know, what's your best piece of advice moving forward on this? Well, this is my favorite piece of advice to tell you. Every time I keynote, I always start this way. Normally I was seeing the folks and I do because I like to break the ice. But my, my, my biggest piece of the next thing I always say to folks is 20 percent of the people in this room do not care what I'm about to say. They don't care. They don't want to hear it. It doesn't matter to them. I could be giving them a bunch of gold up here. It doesn't matter. They're not going to take it. They just don't want to understand that things have to change and things are going to change and things are changing. They're not going to care. You're going to have to figure out who those folks are and you're going to have to spend less time with them and spend 80% of your, and spend all your time with the 80%. Because if you don't, you're going to get bogged down with the, uh, and I hope nobody's name is Nancy on here, the negative Nancy or the nobody's Debbie, the Debbie Downers. I don't see any Debbies on here. Um, but I don't want anybody, I don't want to, I'm sorry if I offended anybody with that, but I don't want anybody to feel negative or feel, you don't want to deal with that. Positivity is where it is. And you want to, you, you, because you know in your heart, and also you know from the data that things have to shift and change. You have to go work with the people that are actually understanding that this shift has to happen, right? And if you're and if you are if you're if you if you're spending all your time on the issue, that means you're not spending none of your time on the solutions. That's number one. Number two, encourage these folks to go to the course because there's gonna be a lot of folks. I'm not doing that. They're just gonna not gonna do it based based on that word right there. Trust me, I know that. Just based on that word right there. Folks are not going to be involved. They don't care about these other three words or they don't care about the campfire. It's just that word right there. I get it. Trust me. I've been doing this for four years. I, I have emails, threatening emails from a lot of folks. But that don't stop me, though, because at the end of the day, um, we got we got some important work to do. And then the, and the third thing I would give you all 
The third thing I would give you all is this. And this is going to, this is probably the best thing. Folks, folks need to see you doing the work. They need to see you finding some folks that don't look like you and taking them in the outdoors or inviting them into your cities and having a personal relationship with people. That's what folks want to see because you then become the, uh, the example for them of folks who don't know how to do this. Many of you on this call, you are, you're working in TDA. You're probably talking to the public a lot. You don't have a problem introducing yourself to people because a lot of folks don't have the personality of Earl and of the folks on this call. And we have to be a conduit for these folks. They have to see this. And if the problem is you can't ask folks to do things that you're not doing. You can't ask them to do that because the first thing I would say is, well, why are you not doing it? As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I'm going to say to you all. You cannot ask folks to look like Earl to go get folks to look like Earl to take them in the outdoors if you're not willing to go go get look like to get folks to look like Earl to take them in the outdoors or to introduce them to a lifestyle that they don't know. And many of you are probably saying, there are not really many folks in my area that look like Earl. Good. That means you won't have that much that, that bigger issue then. That that should be easy to do it then, since there's not that many. Because it only takes one. It doesn't have to be a group of folks. And this and, and as you go through the course, it ain't just about the children. It's about the parents. It only takes one, folks. Awesome. Hey, Earl, just thank you so much for being here and being in this work with us. And we're excited to continue the work with you and the fun with you. And just to everyone who joined us for this call, I know there's um, some folks who've gone through the program and others to go through it. I've gone through it. It's amazing. Um, and we're really excited to, you know, create more connections to Earl and his team and the work that he's doing um, and help, you know, I want to see that map at some point and see just dots all over it from Western North Carolina so that we know oh, and yeah. everyone across the region um, and the nation knows that this is a, a region that is welcoming to everyone. So, um, and we want you to, and, we, and, 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 and we want you to, we want you to reach out to us. We want you to feel like, well, why am I, why am I? Well, am I sitting out on the mat? I, I want you to say that to us. We we want that from you. We want you to feel that passion about this, right? Because uh, it is what it is. And then the last thing, Amy, and I'll let you wrap up, but I want to say to everybody, though, is that um, this, is the, this is the thing I have to share with you, everybody. If you don't remember anything on the sound of my voice at all, this is the one thing I need you to remember. Folks, I hope y'all have the most amazing day of y'all life today. And I hope tomorrow is better for you. I really do. So, thank you, Earl. Great, Earl. All, All right, right. Brad. All right. Yes. <laughs> Lots of no, food that for was thought great. there. It's, just, it's, it's inspiring, you know. It's it's really. I'm excited to. I, I'm excited to get more of our communities involved, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna share this what this recording with others. And if you wanna, if you, the people on this call, if you want to also encourage your your coworkers to watch this and kind of get a team doing it, you're right, get doing the work. So yeah, we're going to end it with that. Um, Amy, did you just want to do a little quick plug? Um, we, there will be conversations like this um, at the Outdoor Economy Conference, which is coming up in a couple weeks, or okay, more than a couple, three, <laughs> right? Oh, you're, you're muted. There we go. Sorry. Yeah, Outdoor Economy Conference, y'all. Cherokee, North Carolina, September 18th. I know um, there's some folks here that are um, already joining us for that. I know we've got Haywood County here. They're a sponsor. So um, lots of great people going to be in the room from across the nation. We've dropped the agenda. You can look at it, um, see who's going to be speaking, who see who's going to be in the room. We're really excited. There's going to be some great um, conversations around equity in the outdoors and diversity in the outdoors. We're launching um an outdoor opportunity fund playbook similar to the outdoor opportunity fund that we've worked on here in western north carolina but how there's a national push for that um to get some federal funding so that's just you know one of the topics similar to what we're talking about today um check out the agenda it's going to be great um the content's amazing but even more so is the conversations that you have in the hallways and at the after parties and the connections that you make there to continue to further the work that we're already doing. So uh, reach out to me if you've got any questions about that.
October the sixth. Oh, I'm gonna say. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. No. I forgot to. Say, I forgot to say this. Listen, October the sixth. We're celebrating our anniversary as a company. We're gonna be celebrating October the sixth through the eighth. We're gonna be celebrating at Marion, North Carolina, at one of our partners, the Spacious Skies Campgrounds. You all are invited. They got cabins. You can get you. They can. You can rent an RV or you can tent camp. But we're gonna have a good time, and we always have a good time. As a matter of fact, it's our first time. We're opening this up to the public. We normally have just our part, our industry partners come in, but we're gonna we're about to we're about to post on social that we are inviting everyone, and we're anticipating a ton of folks. So, um, and and we'll have everything in the link and all that kind of good stuff. But you're welcome. You're invited and you're welcome. Glad you brought that up, Earl. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, cool. And then thanks, everyone. Brad, if you want to yes. put that, I think everybody's got your connection, your email. But reach out to us. Um, we can connect you with Earl and his team if, if y'all aren't already. And um, yeah, I hope everybody has an amazing week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.